Hi, Charlie. Hi, Alison. I'd like to share a game with you, if that's okay. Yes, is that what you've got on the screen? Yeah, okay. So I want you to imagine that those five circles are five counters in a bag. So there's a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six. And I want you to imagine putting your hand into the bag and just pulling out two of the counters at a time. And so the computer is going to simulate that for us. And then in order to win or lose the game, we find the total of the numbers on the two counters. So for example, if we picked out the two and the four, we'd add them together and get a total of six. And we check to see whether the total is an odd total or an even total. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so uh, I'll let you choose. Do you want to be odd or do you want to be even? Um, well, there are more even numbers, so um, I'd quite like to choose to win when there's an even total. Okay, so I'll win if the total is odd. So I'm going to get the computer to spin these counters up and pick two of them out at random for us. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so it's picked the six and the four, so it was an even total, which meant that you won the first game. But uh, if you don't mind, I think I'd like to play it a, a few more times. Is that all right? Okay. Yes. So let's try again. See if I can manage to beat you. Uh, so a five and a three, so you managed to win again, uh, another even total. Uh, I'm going to try one more time just to see if it is possible for Odd to win. Ah, five and a two this time. So uh, it's a seven, which is an odd total. So you lose and uh, and I win. So it is at least possible for us both to win. I do wonder, though, whether the game is entirely fair. So one way that we might decide if a game is fair is by playing it lots of times to see what happens. Now, it would take a long time if I just keep pressing this run once button. So how about we see what would happen if we played the game a hundred times? Are you up for that? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to reset this. And when I click the button, the computer is going to do this a hundred times and then give us our results in a table. So let's see whether you're going to win more often than me out of a hundred times. So this is telling you whether you lost or won on each of the turns and then it's keeping a running total of how many times you won and how many times you lost. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom, after a hundred turns, it looks as if it came out even 43 times, which means that it would have come out odd the other 57 times. So this would predict that you had about a 43% chance of winning. So actually, if this is true, then you were quite lucky to win those first two games. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether the theoretical probability matches up to what happened in these 100 times. So can I show you how I would work that out? Yes, do. Okay, so... One thing that I like to do if I'm thinking about probability is to think about the sample space. So all the different possibilities that can come up and you can draw a sample space diagram like this. So the first number that comes out could have been a two, a three, a four, a five or a six. And the second number that comes out could have been a two, a three, a four, a five or a six. But we couldn't have a two and a two because once we've picked one two, it's already gone. So we can't have the same number twice. Can't have a three and a three. Can't have a four and a four. Can't have a five and a five. And can't have a six and a six. So I need to find the totals to decide whether they're odd or even. So while I'm doing these, just keep an eye and make sure I don't make any arithmetic mistakes. I'm just adding up the number on the top with the number on the side. So that's 6, 7, 9 and 10. 7, 8, 9, 11 and then 8, 9, 10, 11. Does that look about right? That's fine. No mistakes. Okay, so all together then, uh, I can see there are 12 odd numbers in the table 
and there are eight even numbers in the table. So there are 20 altogether. So that would give me a 60% chance of an odd total and a 40% chance of an even total. So what we just saw in the 100 trials that we did where 43 out of 100 were even, that's pretty close to the theoretical probability there. Is that how you would have worked it out? I might have used a tree diagram. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, I would have done a tree diagram with branches to show what my two numbers are. So I can have um, an even number together with another even number, or I can have an even number and an odd one, or I can have an odd and an even and an odd and an odd. Okay, so when I did my sample space diagram, it didn't actually matter what the numbers were. I could have saved myself some time by just writing down whether the totals were even or odd rather than writing down what the actual numbers were. And I think if I work out the probabilities for your tree diagram then, uh, I had the numbers two, three, four, five, and six to start off with. So two, four, and six are my evens. So three out of five of my totals to begin with were even, but two out of five were odd. And then once I've chosen one of the evens, there's only four numbers left altogether, of which two are even and two are odd. But if I start with an odd, then there are still three evens left but one odd left. So I think those are the probabilities along my branches. And then when I multiply, I get uh, six out of 20 would be even followed by even. Six out of 20 would be even followed by odd. Six out of 20 is odd followed by even. And then two out of 20 is that final one of odd followed by odd. Does that agree with what you'd worked out? Yes, and so to get an even total, I must either get even followed by even, so that's that combination at the top, or odd followed by odd, so that's the branch at the bottom. And six twentieths together with two twentieths comes to eight twentieths. So I get the probability of winning Eight twentieth is the same as you got on the sample space diagram. Okay, so I think this game wouldn't be a, a particularly fun one to play, particularly if you were the person who chose even. And so I guess this is the question that we have for those of you watching the video. Would it be possible to adapt the game to turn it into a fair one? So instead of having the five numbers, two, three, four, five, and six to choose from, what if you had some different numbers, if you maybe had more than five numbers or fewer than five numbers? And what balance of odd and even might you try in order to get a fair game? So you could use sample space diagram or a tree diagram to work out the probabilities. And our challenge to you is, can you find a way to make the game fair?